woke up very early and the messages started to float in from staff, from relations, from customers. Happy birthday and basically it's so nice to see all the colleagues uh, congratulating each other with happy birthday today because that's what it is and we're very excited about it. Um, we'll have a full program today, we'll have the events in the uh, hangar later on. Um, as we do always on our birthday, we're revealing the Del Blue uh, house, so we're going to do that uh, later on. And we're very excited about that. Um, and we'll have this, uh, this gathering here this morning because I need to apologize to, uh, to you. We had the uh, kickoff of 100 years KLM exactly 100 days ago on June 29. And quite a few uh, of you were there as well. Uh, and at that time, uh, the presentation was done in Dutch. We had a minister there. So uh, some of you had to bear with me for uh, about uh, 45 minutes listening to Dutch, which uh, probably is not the most inspiring language uh, if you're not speaking it uh, to listen to. So we'll do it in English now. It's basically the 29th of June story uh, wrapped, but in an English, uh, in an English uh, version. And once again, uh, thank you for, for being here. And thank you for joining us today on this, uh, for us, uh, momentous uh, occasion celebrating with, uh, with the country, if you wish. Um, a few words on the, uh, on the foundation of KLM. Uh, today, actually 100 years ago, it was uh, founded by a group of, uh, of businessmen. Uh, seven uh, businessmen raised a capital of 1.2 million Dutch guilders. At that time, we still had guilders, uh, which is about half a million dollars or euros. Uh, today, that's the price probably of a very small component you put in an aircraft and for the rest half a million dollars doesn't bring you anywhere in aviation. But at that time it was enough to found the airline and to start building uh, the airline. Interestingly enough, it already got the, uh, the uh, royal designation, I'll say a bit more on that, uh, that later. Uh, but what is also very nice is that our first flight was actually not in 1919, but was in 1920, uh, coming from London to Amsterdam. Uh, operated by a British pilot. So we were a Dutch company, but the first flight was coming from London uh, to Amsterdam. I guess it just shows uh, the way that they were in a hurry to start, uh, to start operating it. Um, as I said uh, a few minutes before, we were getting the royal designation uh, already in the, in the start. Uh, and that um, this is uh, for those uh, able to read it. This has been uh, the official letter and you can see it, it's September 1919. So one month before the actual company was operating, the Queen at that time, Wilhelmina, uh, Queen Wilhelmina decided to give us the royal designation because she believed this was such an important project for the country and being such a small country with such a long history of international orientation, it was considered to be very important right from the start. So we got this royal Dutch uh, uh, abbreviation. <coughs> Our name, um, and maybe Koen will practice with some of you later today, Koninklijke Luchtvaartmaatschappij. Uh, in, in the, the Dutch phrasing is Koninklijke Luchtvaartmaatschappij, means Royal Dutch Airlines. And, and in fact, um, we have, even though the fact that 80% of our customers are international, we have never uh, considered to change the name KLM, we just kept the Dutch abbreviation, uh, but for international purposes, we put Royal Dutch Airlines underneath. Um, the idea of the first CEO uh, administrator of the airline at that time, Albert Plesman, was the ocean of the air unites all people. And look at this picture with Schiphol Airport and slowly the network uh, building up. It's really fantastic uh, to see. But the philosophy of the ocean of the air unites all people is still very much alive. And even though, and I'll come back to that topic later, sustainability, how to make sure that there's a, there's a future planet and, and room for future, future generations as well. The idea that air travel is connecting countries, is connecting nations, is helping to exchange ideas, views, philosophies, is really important. And 100 years later, this idea of the ocean of the air unites all people, in fact, is still there. And all of you, um, I'm sure you have that experience where you fly, you meet other people, you meet surprising people, nice people, you go to different places. So this whole philosophy is still, is still there. A little chart of one of the first networks and look how the timetable was being made. Just a 24 hour clock and you start to write on the clock at what time flights were leaving and to where they were leaving. Very, very nice to see. And we have some archives in, uh, in Amsterdam where we keep all the old network scheduling types of that. It's really fascinating to see how that has uh, evolved and you see here 
At that time, we still had domestic flights to Eindhoven, for those knowing where that is. That's about 80 kilometers from here, 70 kilometers <laughs> from here. Uh, obviously, we're no longer having that. It's just a train trip by now. Um, Marseille, you see underneath, and there you see Tehran, Bangkok, Calcutta, Singapore, really the development of the network uh, at these, uh, these times. But the idea was, we need to dream big, and that has really helped us KLM through time. 